Personnel selected, Dave, Toy Restoration Expert and YouTuber. Channel codename, Toy Poloi. Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be looking at repairing this vintage Kenner mask switchblade. Now I picked this up recently off eBay. It's all complete but I knew there were a few issues with it and there seem to be very common issues which is why I thought it would be quite a fun project to work on. It's a really great toy. It can either be an aeroplane with all the bits sort of set like that or it can turn into a helicopter and that's where some of the issues sort of uh, start to uh, become apparent because uh, the areas where it turns into the helicopter mode are the bits where it's broken. These wings should be able to fold back and lock in place. And the way that works is there's supposed to be a little sort of latch system here that when you push this tail fin down, it locks those in place. And I think pretty much everyone I've uh, ever seen has that piece broken. So we're going to work out a way of either making a replacement or sorting a replacement for that to get those wings locked in place. There's also another latch that seems to be very commonly broken and that's the one that holds these helicopter blades in place. You can see there's this little handle here. When I lift that up that will actually lock those blades down. Uh, there's supposed to be a plastic spring there that sort of holds this lever in the up position but that tends to be broken so if I let go of this switch you can see that the blades pop up. Uh, that again is very common and I think I've got a really good idea of how, how we can fix that. Otherwise this ship as you can see is in relatively nice condition. It's very dirty so we'll give it a clean in a minute but it does have everything and it even comes with the bomb underneath. So if I turn it over you can see there is an orange bomb there. Now I've not worked on this toy before so it's all going to be new to me uh, but I have worked on a few other mask vehicles as you have seen recently and they're quite fascinating just because of the way they are put together. There's lots of uh, sort of technical things going on inside to make all these mechanical bits work. But because there is all of those mechanical bits, they do tend to break. So I think I may be working on uh, more mask vehicles in the future. But as I say, the first thing that we need to do is actually give this a good clean. This is a really filthy toy. It came off eBay and I don't think it's been sort of uh, stored anywhere particularly clean. There's lots of dirt and grime in there. So we need to uh, sort of take it apart so that we can actually give everything a good clean with so uh, let's take this vehicle to pieces and then we can uh, yeah, wash it with some hot soapy water. A lot of the pieces on this vehicle are detachable which will make it a lot easier to clean. So we can remove the cockpit, that's probably the easiest thing to take out. We've also got Miles Mayhem in the front, take him off. Uh, then these wings do detach so if I uh, turn this over you can see they are clipped in. Again just gently pulling those out we can take those wings off. So there's those. Same with this uh, landing gear, these little uh, sort of landing struts. Those will pull off there. So we take those off. There we go. And then we've got these uh, propeller blades, which I think just unclip with a careful sort of wiggle. And that, uh, yeah, there we go. And these uh, propeller blades are a sort of common area to be missing. These, these exhaust pieces do seem to be a common piece to uh, sort of go missing as well because they just gently unclip. I'm going to take those out just to make it slightly easier. So I think I might end up doing a second video where I try to uh, recreate some of these pieces because those certainly wouldn't be too hard to make. And I also think we could make some uh, propeller blades fairly easily. Anyway, this is now in pieces. So I'm going to give this a wash just using some hot soapy water and a toothbrush. I'm not going to submerge it because I know inside it there are all sorts of springs and things. I don't want to get anything too wet. I forgot to take the bomb out, so let's just take the bomb out as well. Um, yeah, sometimes with toys like this, if you know there's bits of metal inside, don't submerge them in water because once it, things inside get wet, they will rust. So I want to be quite careful with this. So a toothbrush and some hot soap of water. We should be able to clean that up quite nicely. Then once that's done, I'm going to take it apart and actually try and work out how it works because, as I say, I've never looked inside one of these before. So it's all going to be new to me. Now that it's all clean, we can get on with uh, taking this ship apart. It looks fairly straightforward to do. There are a few screws around. There's one hidden there just under where the uh, helicopter blades go. And then if we turn it over, you can see there are more on the bottom. Two at the back here, two that are hidden by the little uh, landing skis. So you have to flap that up and one there. 
doesn't look too complicated but I am going to try and sort of memorize where the screws go because they're likely to be different sizes of screw so uh, just sort of as you unscrew it keep a sort of check of what's coming out so let's do this one first and we'll see what it looks like okay so that's a, a longish looking screw Those ones are the same, so those rear two will be the same screw. Right, that one is a smaller screw, so we've got uh, longer screws at the back. We've got the smaller screw just under the wings there. and then a longer screw at the front. Now it's a case of uh, taking this apart. We know that everything is going to be sprung together, so they're going to be metal springs all over. So you just have to sort of go slow when taking something like this apart. Uh, I have a feeling because this back clip is already broken, there will be some springs that go from about here all the way to the back. And I think uh, once we unhook this, those may spring forward just because that clip is broken. So I'm just going to very carefully do this and uh, see what happens. Oh, well, there's a little bit of clip has come out, so some, something is definitely broken there. Oh, another piece of clip, so yeah, it's definitely broken pieces there. So I say, I'm just going to go slowly with this, just so nothing sort of surprises me. Looks to me like it's partially glued at this point here, so I um, wasn't expecting that. Let's just slowly prise that apart. Yeah, it looks like there's a little bit of glue holding that together there. Let's try the other side. Oh yeah, there is a little bit of glue there. Looks like something has been glued. All right, that side has come apart quite nicely. Something is pinging inside, you can hear. There we go. Yeah, it just seems to be a little bit of glue along that edge. Now we can lift that all up and see what's going on. Right. Yep, everything is pinged out of place, but nothing looks like it's uh, too complicated. So let me rearrange a few bits and we'll take a closer look at it. OK, so now I've had a, a quick look at it. I can see exactly what's gone wrong and uh, what needs fixing. It looks fairly complicated, but actually it's a fairly sort of straightforward little mechanisms. You've got these wing guns here that are sort of locked in place by this uh, sort of clipping mechanism. So those are pushed back. And then as the wings come forward, they hit this little button here and unlock them and they fire forward. So those, there's nothing wrong with them. The land Landing gear uh, sort of spring loaded mechanism which is this piece here uh, the main part of it works fine but actually what holds this uh, right hand side one in has snapped so I've had to take the spring off that's what uh, sort of sprung out when I took the top off it's held in place by the top section so you can see here there's a little orange piece here that actually holds those pieces in place but there's another piece on the bottom these little pegs that come up either side to enable this part to rotate you can see on one side one part has snapped off so if I put the spring on now uh, the, the whole mechanism sort of pulls itself apart there's nothing to hold it in place so before I put it back together I'm going to have to rebuild that little peg there it shouldn't be a problem I can just use some two millimeter styrene and, and there's quite a lot of space around it so I can easily reinforce it and make something quite strong so I'll have to do that before everything goes back together but the main issue on this bottom section is certainly the uh, mechanism that holds the wings in place uh, here is the remains of it you can see what's happened is these little clips that stick out each side both of those has snapped off so uh, there's nothing left to hold this in place it should if I pull this really taut and uh, keep these in place just with my uh, fingers here it should end up sitting up here and sort of move back and forwards uh, and uh, sort of clip the wings but that has completely snapped so what's going to need to be done 
is we're going to have to make this whole piece from scratch. I don't think if we glued those on they would have anywhere near the strength to uh, hold it in place. So I'm going to make something from scratch. I can also see there's two little pegs inside here that have snapped off so we'll need to rebuild those as well. Um, nothing though looks too complicated. A lot of uh, sort of making out of a styrene sheet. Uh, when we come onto the top uh, again, this piece is, we can see that we know that this uh, little spring piece is broken. Uh, I will deal with that second because we just got to take a few more screws out to uh, get into that. So let's fix all the issues on the bottom section first and then we'll deal with the uh, broken top parts. Right, the first thing to mend is actually this landing gear because I think that will be the simplest. So you can see here on the right hand side we've got these little U-shaped indents and on the left hand side one of the uh, sides of that U-shaped piece has snapped off and that's where this landing piece uh, sort of sits and is spring loaded to make the landing gear spring up and spring down. So I'm just going to very quickly fashion something out of some one and two millimeter bits of styrene sheet. These are off cuts that I've uh, used for other projects. I'm just going to cut something that's the right shape and there's, as I say there's quite a lot of uh, clearance either side of this. Nothing appears to be that sort of that vital so there's a lot of space either side. You can see uh, some of it from the outside here so I'm going to do all of the fixing on the inside. So I'm going to make a plate that sits on here and then stick another piece of styrene on just to sort of uh, reinforce it but I think I can make something that will work quite nicely and it should all be hidden inside so yeah I'll just get cutting and uh, use a bit of plastic weld. This is the right sort of plastic this uh, bottom piece this is the right sort of plastic to uh, work with plastic well so that and styrene should stick together very nicely Okay, so you can see that is the piece I have now made. So it's just fashioned out of some one millimeter styrene for this sort of support plate, and then a little bit of two millimeter styrene just to make the little post that goes up. We get the uh, landing gear pieces that are these. You can see they're linked together using uh, these little uh, teeth so that they uh, move at the same time. It's quite a clever little uh, setup. And drop that in, and that does seem to fit quite nicely, and that post is holding it in place. So we could do a quick test if we put the spring back on. That spring loads these, so we hook it over that post there and onto that one there. Yeah, that's going to hold quite nicely. When it's all put together, as I showed you, there is this uh, orange plate. Oh, actually, there's two orange plates there uh, that actually hold them in place. So this only needs to hold it while we're sort of putting it together. I'll do a quick test. If I hold those with my fingers and just rotate that down, Oh, yeah, that does lock in place, but you can see uh, it's quite spring loaded. So the spring is now fired off over here. Uh, so yeah, that does work very well. We'll put that to one side and then we can get on with fixing this piece. Now I've uh, actually just stuck the piece back together so you can see what sort of shape it needs to be. It's this sort of hooked piece. Um, you, just using a bit of plastic work like that it's not going to be strong enough and this plastic is so thin that I don't think we could pin it with anything. So my plan is actually to make this from scratch. So uh, first up we need to take these springs off which I think should be quite straightforward. We can just rotate those around um, and then uh, I need to make a pattern and I'm going to basically uh, the reason I put this back together was so that I could take it into Photoshop and uh, draw on top of it to make a pattern that I can then copy and I'm going to make this out of some styrene sheet. Oh, how do I unhook these? I'm getting a bit confused here. Oh, there we go. They just unhook. So we unhook those springs 
Yeah, I think it, the, the simplest thing is to make something from scratch because I don't think there's going to be any way of actually fixing this and making it work nicely. It's, it's just too brittle and too old and also too thin. I think what we need to do is thicken this up. So let me go and do a bit of Photoshop work and I'll make a pattern and then we'll uh, make one of these from scratch. Here is the pattern. As you can see, I've basically copied this shape, but I've sort of thickened a few areas of it up. I can see exactly why this is breaking. I've actually got a couple of these now. One of them is broken in this middle piece here. Both of them have the uh, hooks on the side snapped off, but one has this middle piece broken and the other one has the bottom piece broken. So what I've done is I've using the sort of the toy as a guide and seeing how much movement there is. It turns out that that horizontal piece there can be much thicker. So I've thickened that up. This bottom piece can also be a lot thicker. So I've thickened that up. And likewise, these hooks don't need to be as thin as they are. So I've actually put some extra sort of uh, space around the side of those. And I think this will work. So here is my pattern. Uh, you'll be able to download this for free from uh, toyploy.com. And I'm going to be making something out of two millimeter styrene sheet. These little blocks here are extra bits that need to be stuck on top because they are a little stopper. You can see there's a little stopper here. Again, I'm not sure why there's only one on one side. Inside the toy, there's space for two, but um, they've only put a stopper on one side, which I think is another little weak area. So I'm going to put two on there. And it also turns out that this bar across uh, is actually the main part of the mechanism. And we can make that thicker by sticking another piece on the underside of it, because uh, on the underside of this here, there's nothing in the toy, so we can actually thicken that up and make that a really thick piece, and that will give everything a lot more strength. So what I've done is I've taken this pattern and I've stuck it to some two millimeter thick styrene sheet. I've just stuck it using some Pritt stick, so we will be able to remove this. And I've now got to cut this out. Uh, cutting this out is gonna be a little bit awkward just because of the way it's uh, made. So we've got to be very careful cutting these out. We don't want to put any stress on these uh, bits in the corner. And we've also got to cut out this piece in the middle, which I'm gonna do by drilling holes through and then sort of carefully cutting. And there are also two holes to drill at the top. So I'm gonna be using all the tools I have to hand. So I've got a little uh, razor saw here. I've got a knife. I've got various drills and things like that. So here's my pin vise with the drill in it. And I'm going to very carefully cut this out. Shouldn't take Take more than about 20 minutes and we'll end up with something I hope that is stronger than this uh, but I will sort of get cutting first and we'll see what we can make.
Okay, I'm starting to get a shape I'm quite happy with. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time, especially to cut out that middle hole just because it's a bit awkward. The best way to do it is to drill a load of holes around the edge and then just sort of start scoring it. But you can see I've now got this shape that does fit very nicely uh, where that original fixing should go. And you can see it slides back and forwards, which is what you need to uh, have it do because that's how the wing mechanisms work. The wings fold back and then this piece sort of slots back and then comes back forwards and clicks in place. So I'm happy with how that's working. I need to do a few more little bits of fine modification to it and just sort of general tidying up as some of the edges aren't uh, particularly smooth. So I'm going to do that. And then I also want to put in these extra bits of support. So I'm going to stick another bar across this on the underside. On the top side I've got to make these two panels. And before I remove the sticker I need to drill some holes where these two little markings are. So I'm going to do that and then add the extra pieces on and we'll have something that should work because it will basically be a copy of this piece but it'll be a bit stronger. We're now in a position to test this new piece that I've made. I'm actually quite happy with how it's come out. It's nice and sturdy. You can see I put a couple of stoppers on the top side of uh, this piece using the uh, markings on my little diagram. Those slot into some pieces on the top part of the switchblade. And on the bottom, you can see I've put another piece of styrene across just to give that bar an extra bit of strength. And I think it's going to work quite nicely. So that fits in there and is held in place. I've tried to repair these little uh, sort of tabs that have snapped off here, but they're just too small to repair. So it's going to be a bit more tricky to put this together just because I'm going to have to hold this in place while I uh, put the rest of the ship together. The top section again actually holds these in place. Uh, those little pegs are just there I guess for uh, when you're putting it together the first time and it makes it a bit easier. So we can now do a test. I need to uh, reattach these little springs here. So these are uh, the wing mechanisms. There is a definite left and right. You can see that the paddle has a little bar on the back of it so that it moves like that. So uh, you want the bar to be able to face backwards with the wing bit sort of facing backwards and that is so that is the uh, left hand wing that we can see here so I can uh, hook this on just push that through the hole and wind it around get the uh, spring to attach like so so this is the other one again same process we can hook that in so that just goes into the hole and we twist it around like so. So those are attached and we can now put these back in place. So what we need to do is drop this into the bottom of the switch blade. So you can see we've got this bar that runs vertically, put the bottom of the bar in the hole and then that little paddle that is attached to the spring needs to go just behind that semicircular part there. So we drop that in like that. Uh, that paddle is the bit that turns the wing inwards. So we do that on that side. We do the same on the other side. Get it all lined up. These springs make everything a little bit more awkward, but it's quite an ingenious uh, mechanism. That's that lined up. And then this piece has to hook all the way up here, and it would normally hook on those two missing parts. But you can see that I don't have those missing parts, so I'm just going to have to hold that by hand. And everything does want to unping as uh, you're doing this, so just be prepared to keep sort of grabbing parts and putting them back in. It's a bit awkward, but it is all possible. It's just uh, one of those, you need an extra set of hands sort of uh, projects. Right, there you go, that's got that in. So I put that up here. I'm not going to put in all of the mechanisms this time because I just want to test this rear mechanism. So I'm going to hold that in place. We have the rear tail fin. This has to slot in there. Which way around does that need to go? I've got that round the wrong way. It's got to go around that way. We slot that in like that and that hangs in a little groove there. And if I get the top section, as I say, I'm not putting all of the mechanisms in at this instance. I just want to check that my new uh, clip works. So I have to line this up, drop it on top. Make sure everything clips down.
Okay, that's all clipped in place. I'm going to put a couple of screws in just because I can feel this is under quite a lot of tension now that with those springs in. I don't want things to fly out when I test it. So I'm just going to put a couple of screws in just to hold the body together and then we can do a proper test. Right, so that should be enough to do that. Let's put the wings in place, just clip those on temporarily so that we can check that it does actually lock back. So that's one wing on. That's the other wing on. So now what happens is when we fold these wings back, like so, there is a clip here, and this is the new clip. If I put that uh, tail fin down, that should pull the clip back. And you can see that there's a nice new little clip there. And if I let that go, it should grab that wing, which it has. Has it grabbed the other side? It has. So there we go. Those wings are now locked back. So this is essentially in helicopter mode. And if I put this tail fin back down and I pop it, it fully in place, so I push it down, the wings flip forward. That looks like that's working nicely. So let's test putting those wings back in the main position. So we fold the wings back and they should line up with this new clip that I put, which looks like it does. And if I take the tail fin out, that should clip and grab. Yeah, which it does. So look at that. They have grabbed that's not too bad. I don't think it's quite as good as the original one. I might do a little bit of fine tuning. It looks like this side is a little bit too, too thin. So I think I'm going to just have to do a little bit of fine tuning on that. But the general thing does work. So if I put that in again, they fire forwards. I'm quite happy with that. A few little modifications and I think uh, we will get that perfect. But that certainly is a nice replacement clip. OK, as you can see, I've taken it all apart again. I've made a couple of tiny modifications. Really, it's just a case of trimming little bits off uh, some size just so that it moves over a bit. It was too far over to the left and it needed to be a little bit more over to the right. And I've now got it so it's going to fit quite nicely. And I can see uh, that there's enough of these uh, clips sticking out either side. It just takes a little bit of fine tuning sometimes. But uh, certainly following this pattern, I've managed to make something that works really quite nicely. And it feels very sturdy. I don't think this is going to break. It's a shame I can't repair these two little clips on the inside of here but as you see you don't actually need them once it's all put together it's fine uh, the clips are sort of needed for when you put it together it just makes it that little bit more awkward because you have to hold this under tension while you get the top section on and make sure all of these pieces are in place but it is possible so I'm going to class this part as done now we'll move on to fixing the uh, sort of propeller locking mechanism which again I think should be quite straightforward to do but I'm very happy with how this works it's not the easiest of things to make it takes about half an hour to cut that out but if you've got one of these with this piece broken it's uh, something that you're going to need to do and it's not impossible it just takes a little bit of time and patience to access the uh, propeller locking mechanism we need to take a couple more screws out you can see if we turn this over there are two screws holding in the uh, sort of inside part of the cockpit and the bit that makes the propellers turn if we push this button in you can see it spins that part there making the propeller spin uh, there is a spring that attaches that to the underside so I'm just going to unhook that I've got a pair of tweezers here and I think I should be able to unhook that from the bottom and that will mean that it's, nothing's under tension and we're not going to have any sort of parts springing out. So there you go, that's that spring unhooked. We'll just remove it so you can see that's a tiny spring there. That should mean that when I unscrew this now, things aren't going to fly everywhere. Let's uh, take these two screws out and see what this mechanism looks like. Again, these are the same bigger screws that we saw earlier. And so here you can see this is the underlying mechanism and there is a spring there. That's the spring that pushes the propeller blades up. So I'm just going to take that out. And then there's a few gears and the push button. Everything seems to be sort of loosely held in place. I'm guessing it's that top piece that holds it down. So we can take that out. That's the main gear. Then there's the uh, push button. You can see there's a little uh, set of teeth on that. And that uh, looks like it runs along the small set of gears on the bottom of that. And then that big gear. Uh, runs this part. It doesn't look like this is going to fall out so I'm going to leave that as is. I probably could take that out but there doesn't seem to be any point. So we'll leave that in place and then this is the broken switch that holds everything down. So what happens is uh, there's a plastic spring you can see there which has snapped and we've got to replace that with uh, something different and that forces this lever upwards and that locks on there with a tiny little latch. So once that's forced upwards, it locks the propellers down. 
I don't think it's going to be too hard to mend that. I can see exactly what I need to do. I'm going to remove that broken spring, the plastic spring. There's nothing we can do about that. And I'm going to make a little panel that fits in there. And then I will attach a new spring, a proper metal spring to that panel. And I think if we move it far enough away, uh, it should give it enough sort of leverage to uh, push that up. I don't think you need a particularly big spring. I think you could probably overdo that with a big spring. A small spring and a tiny little panel uh, built in will work. So let's get constructing something to fit in there. So what we're going to do to replace this little broken spring, as you can see, it's a piece of uh, curved plastic that was cast into this button. So as you pushed it down, that flexed a bit. Over the years, this plastic has got brittle and you can see that snapped off. This seems to be a very common problem with uh, the switchblade. All of these seem to be broken. And if they're not broken now, they will break in future. So my plan is to actually replace it with a spring. So I've made this tiny little plate. So it's a, a piece of uh, one millimeter styrene sheet. And I've chosen black because I think it works quite nicely. And I've cut it to fit exactly into this space. There are actually a couple of little sort of uh, posts or pillars on either side. So I've cut a couple of notches onto uh, the side of this, but that now sits very nicely in there. And in the middle, you can see I've stuck another piece of styrene. And that piece of styrene is actually just to hold a spring. I found this tiny little spring. I have a box of springs that I don't think I've shown before on this channel, but basically this is a box of just oddments and springs that I've kept. So no particular size. I've just uh, found one that I thought looks quite good and I've cut it down to a shorter length. So it's about, it's just slightly over two centimetres long and this one is about uh, four I'm going to say five millimetres in diameter. You could probably use bigger ones. You could probably use smaller ones. I don't think it's going to particularly matter. And the idea for the little post that I've stuck on there is that I can drop this spring on and that will stop the spring moving or sort of moving about and falling out. I'm going to glue this in in the end, but I want to do a test fit to make sure everything works. So I'm going to put it all back together and we'll test if this works. If it does, I'm going to drop a little bit of super glue on either end of that and glue that in place. But when you turn that over, you can see that basically that little panel inside has now got a black panel in it rather than a, an empty hole. And I don't think you'll really notice that. I could, if I wanted, I suppose, paint that blue, but I think the black works quite nicely. So let's put this together with this in place and we'll see if it actually works. We just got to sort of reverse exactly what uh, we did when we took it apart. So that drops in there. I think the little uh, pillar part goes through a little hole just there, a little latch section, so it does. And then we've got to get in all of these other pieces and parts. So that's the uh, sort of push button for the propellers. That seems to slot in there. Then we've got the other gear, which goes up that way. And that lines over the top of that. I think we're going to have to hold this multiple hands. Again, it's always of use. Uh, we have a spring here. That goes on to there. There's another piece of plastic that goes on the front. I'm not going to put that on just for the moment because this is just a test fit. And we'll line everything up like so. And I'm going to put a couple of screws in just to make sure it all uh, is held together. And then we'll test to see if it's latched on. Right, so you can see there that I've put it back together. So that's my new little switch there with the uh, spring underneath it. So it springs quite nicely. You can just about see the bit of black styrene there. And if I turn it over again, you can just about see the spring. You want the spring to be as far along this arm as uh, possible because uh, then the leverage is much more. But we'll check that this works. So if I pop that down, that does lock in place press the button and it unlocks. So yeah, that's all working quite nicely. Uh, we've now got to put this all back together. So we'll uh, turn this back over. We need to put that spring on there. And then we've got to put the rest of the ship back together with all of the fixes in place. Uh, that's going to be a little bit more difficult because there are just so many springs and so many things under tension. But I'm glad we've got all of these pieces working. It's just a case of reconstructing everything. Right, this is going to be the fun part because we've got to put everything back together and in the right order. I've already put the wing pieces in, which I showed you earlier. This is not under tension just yet because I haven't pulled that part fully back and we can only do that once we uh, have everything else in place. So we've got the landing gear pieces, which are these two, and they go in a specific way around and you've got to line up these little gears. So uh, I'm going to line the gears up outside, drop them in and check that that fits. So that fits nicely. So you can see we have these two little posts on the landing gear and that's where we've got to put this spring. So this is the first bit of tension we've got to add to this. So I'm going to hook that over there. And then I'm going to pull it and hook it over the other end. And then those are under tension. So I don't want to let those spring out at the moment. They're in the up position. So I'm going to very carefully lay this down and those shouldn't spring out. Now we've got to put in the sort of guns that go on the front. 
and there are three pieces to this so you've got the gun itself you've got a spring and then you've got this release mechanism so this is the uh, left hand side one i've just left these on my desk as i took them out so i know exactly where they should go so that hooks over that little post there then there's a little peg that that bit drops over so i'm going to leave those like that again not under tension so the guns are in the out position I've got to do the other side so it's the same thing again three pieces just drop them on make sure everything is nice and neat that is looking good so that's all of the base pieces the top part we don't have to worry about because as we know that's all screwed together so we then get the rear tail fin and that has to be dropped in this end so we've got to make sure it's up the right way turn it round and then just sort of slot it in place like that so it hangs down now comes the tricky bit just because those two little posts are missing so I've got to pull this so it's in the right position which is about there and I've got to hold that and I've got to get the top section and drop it over the top make sure everything lines up make sure I don't knock anything out of place and then we'll screw it together Right, I think I've got it. So if I turn this over, I'm holding everything because I don't want anything to sort of ping out. I'll get the screw. So we know that there are two short screws that go under these two pieces here. I'll do those last. I'm going to put in all of the longer screws first, make sure everything is sort of firmly held together before I uh, move those in case that uh, pushes everything apart. So let's get this uh, screwed in here at the back. OK, so now I can move these out of the way. Nothing should ping open and we'll put these two screws in underneath. And there we go. That's it all back together. Everything should be working. So I'm going to put all of the extremities on, all of the other bits that are missing. So the, uh, the wings, the cockpit, uh, the blades, and then we'll test it out. P-O-Y-P-O-L-L-O-I So here we have switchblade in helicopter mode and everything is working as it should. You can see the wings are now locked back in place and if I press the button on the side the blades spin quite nicely and we can now lock those in place. So if I turn those around like that and then push them down that little clip works very nicely. I'll just show you it working. So there's an unclipped and then there is clipped, clipped and unclipped. So that's good. If I move the rear tail fin so that it locks the blades in place by pushing it like that, this should unlock the wings and they will swing forwards like that. So they do. That's all working. You can see the guns now shot out. And if I put the landing gear up, we can put the little uh, rockets out the front of those. So everything is working very nicely. It's been quite a lot of work making that new latch mechanism here. It's obviously quite a complicated job. But now I have this pattern, it's an awful lot easier. And if you want to do this yourself, this pattern is going to be available for free on toyploy.com. Mending that little switch there is uh, fairly straightforward. Just a bit of styrene and a spring does that. And then obviously I showed you some other fixes inside, which were to do with the uh, landing gear, which I hadn't expected to find. But I'm really happy with how this has turned out as you can see switchblade is looking very nice but this isn't going to be the end of this project because there's still a lot of things I haven't covered I haven't dealt with the stickers on this one they're not in too bad condition but often the stickers are rough so I'll cover that in a future video I actually have another switchblade here which I showed you while I was uh, washing up the vehicles and cleaning them and this one needs some work as well I'm still missing a few parts on this one and I plan to make them a piece that is often missing is this little exhaust cover and this is one I've made here so this is my prototype one you can see there that's what it should look like and this is my prototype so I will do a video showing how to make those I plan also to make some uh, propeller blades for this because I think I can make something that will do just the same sort of job as those and it shouldn't be too hard to uh, make something 
something that fits in there. The only thing I do need to find for this one is I'm missing one landing gear and I'm missing the missile, but those I may come across in time. So uh, for now, I will deal with the other bits that I think I can make. So join me again on a second part of uh, this restoration when I come back to the switchblade to cover a few more issues. But for now, I think I've covered probably the, the main two issues that anyone's going to have on this, which is the broken wing clip and the broken latch that holds the blades in place. That does seem to be the main issue with these switchblades. I need to say a massive thank you to Luke from Reynolds Reviews who helped me out with a few bits for this project. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.